Hey tribe, welcome to HGDC, HG Designs Crochet. I'm Heather and this channel is all about crochet, usually. But today I'm going to do a shelfy book tour. So usually when I'm recording, I'm sat here on my sofa, which I've pushed out of the way. And you can see my books as my backdrop and I have been making noises about doing a shelfie tour for the longest time and so I decided it is time to do it um, mainly because I have been through my shelves and I've took out almost a hundred books and they are going to be donated so I'm going to take you through that pile as well as my beautiful shelves so let's get started if you enjoy this video give it a thumbs up and a like and if you've read any of these books then let me know below or if you've got suggestions for me I would love to hear them all and if you're looking for crochet content then click on the playlist at the end which is crochet and you'll find all of the usual goodness there okay let's do this so for my shelfy tour if we step back and take it all in, I have this one bookcase with loads of DVDs at the bottom. So starting from the top, self-development books and some of my Harry Potter paraphernalia and then my Harry Potters as well as the Quidditch Through the Ages, Fantastic Beasts and Beetle of the Bard with some more of my Harry Potter stuff. And then, I don't know if you've noticed, but I've got colourful black, that used to be all white, black, and then colourful again. So on this first shelf of black books is the majority of my vampire books now. I have Twilight, I've got Torment and Fallen by Lauren Kate. Um, Insurgent and then I've got the Hunger Games as well and I've got a stack of Twilight there. Um, one of those is actually in Italian. I think it's... which one is it? This one. <laughs> this one is actually in Italian. I'll show you that in a moment. Um, and then I've got another set of Twilight but in the white spines. And then some more. This shelf is more my adult novels. And then I have my biblical text there and there. And then here I've got some werewolf, vampire, um, fairies and a little bit of Italian as well. And then down here, more vampire. Um, my favourite vampire series is this one here. Vampire Academy. There's another series there that I read during uni. That's actually a bottle of True Blood. That's a Harry Potter pen. It's a bookmark made by my grandmother. And yet more fantasy books. And then down here, these are all of the colourful books that I've got. Um, starting from here, Pippi is an Italian. These are an amazing series on trolls. I recommend them without a doubt. And then I've got some of the hardbacks, those two red ones my dad got me when I was very young. I actually unwrapped them in this house on a Christmas one morning. And then I've got some random ones in between. So one of my friends actually did 30 books for my 30th for me. And some of those are on this shelf. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the camera around and I'm going to go through some of my favourite books. Had to show you my Hogwarts crest with its light on. Behind it I have a sign for the Room of Requirement and there's another one just behind there saying Wizards Welcome. And then I've got another Hogwarts crest, Harry Potter Trivial Pursuits, um, Jelly Beans, Bertie, Bots, Every Flavour, Every Flavour Beans, The Funko Pop and then I've got Hermione's wand. <laughs> I also have a golden snitch. 
bookmark and I have Harry Potter Uno and some more Thirty box every flavour beans and when they say every flavour they mean every flavour I have always been a bookworm I love 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 to read and it used to be my biggest love but yarn has definitely superseded that without a doubt I have read 16 is it 16 books so far this year 14 15 16 and I am on Goodreads um, I think you can find me under Heather Griffith but I will put that down below for you um, and I have set myself the challenge of 52 books this year and so I am well on track for that right now I've had a good start to the year um, my process for picking books is to just stand in front of my bookshelf and then whichever one it is calling to me the most I would just pick it um, I try not to overthink it and just go in and pick I tend to have a physical book on the go and also a book on my Kindle I find that my Kindle is sometimes more portable and it's good at night because you don't have to get up you don't have to get up at night and turn off the light first world problems um, I actually buy the majority of my books second hand most of the books on here were bought from bookshops charity shops as in independent bookshops charity shops or online um, Amazon eBay or a website called world of books which rescues books from um, going into landfill and they are really really good prices and because I buy most of my books secondhand, I am not too precious about holding on to them because I have found that I cannot keep all of the books that I read in my lifetime. I used to have an absolutely huge collection that easily amounted to almost a thousand books and it just became more of a burden than a pleasure because they all needed looking after and I didn't really have the space. And so when I got my Kindle, I mass got rid of most of my books. And then steadily over time, my books have built back up. And then I will have a mass clear out and I will move on 50 to 100 books at a time. And then gradually it will build up again. Um, there are some that I will always keep, like my Harry Potter books. One set of Twilight, I think I'll always keep that. Um, and certain books along the way that I've collected that I know I'll either read again or I really got a lot from it. I think it's good to buy books secondhand where you can because there are so many books already in print um, and it also means because they come to me slightly worn I'm not bothered about them going in my book in my bag and maybe getting slightly trashed or battered like I take good care of my books don't worry I don't harm books but if something was to happen or they get a bit scuffed, I'm fine with that, which means that they can go with me wherever I go. So my most read genres used to be vampires, dystopian, sci-fi, fantasy and a little bit of crime and a lot of teen novels and that has been the case pretty much since I was about 18 or 19 and so that's 11 to 12 years now and it's only in the past I'd say two years that my interests have really really changed so for a while I was all about the vampire books and I didn't want to read anything else and then I think when I got to about 28, I didn't enjoy reading them as much. And so I just put it down to that I didn't want to read. In actual fact, my interests had changed and I have re realized, discovered that I really enjoy reading self-development books. I really enjoy reading business books. And I guess that's because that's where I am with my life at the moment, because I am building HGDC into mega, mega business. And because I am building myself into an amazing person, these are all things that I would like to read on. 
Um, so I have a stack of self-development books which I will show you now. This is my stack of self-development books that I have in physical paperback. I also have quite a lot of books on my Kindle um, and I tend to read them on my Kindle and if they are really good also buy them in paperback. And then I have lent out quite a few of my books, so The Happiness Project, Lean In by Sandra, the lady from Facebook, was it Facebook? I'll put it below. I read the book and I enjoyed it. Um, one of the You're a Badass books and my girl boss book, I've lent those out so they would also be in this stack. Um, let's pick up a few. So we've got You're a Badass by Jensen Kiro. It's actually a pretty good book and I read it on my Kindle and then I bought it when I saw it really cheap in the works. Um, I think I'm going to actually add this to a reread but because it's bright yellow I don't think I will read this in public so I'll probably read it on my Kindle. Kindles have the added bonus of people don't know what you're reading. Um, it is a really good book, it was bite sized chunks, really good quotes, really good extracts so I bought it in paperback as well. The Power of Now, I think everybody's heard of that book. Um, I did struggle through it to be honest because it's written in quite heavy language but I did take there some really good takeaways from it. Big Magic, I've reviewed this before on the channel absolutely great book and um, it's well read you can tell by the spine the spine's been cracked this really reset my mindset on creativity and what it means to be a designer a creator and to really enjoy it i'd recommend that book the secret i think everybody's heard of the secret and the law of attraction Again, I've read this one twice. Um, it's not as amazing as all of the hype, but it is a good one for your mindset. And then this one, The Highly Sensitive Person. I started reading on this. Um, I've got another one, Highly Intuitive People. I class myself as a highly sensitive person and I had read a little bit about it online and whenever I read anything and I'm interested in it then I collect books on that area and I really like to feed my mind and become really knowledgeable. Um, I am an introvert and I class myself as highly sensitive because I am sensitive to stimulus, stimuli. So for example if a TV is really loud I find it really jarring. Um, I'm always saying to Brad, the TV is too loud, please turn it down. I find overcrowded places not so much overwhelming but just there is so much to take in and process and so to understand myself better and to be able to enhance my strengths and address my weaknesses I started to read up on this and they are both good books in their own ways as you can see on this one, I've actually tabbed it because I didn't want to highlight it. Um, and in actual fact, I'm going to reread this one. I like to reread my books, especially when they're self development books. I like to read through them, have my takeaway, and then go back to them and see what else I can take from it. Because it's just like when you watch a film, you watch it and think it's amazing and then you go back and you realise you missed all of these details and I, this is definitely an area that I would like to read more on as well as different personality types like the Enneagram, um, Gretchen Rubin, the author of The Happiness Project, she also has a personality type book and I'd like to read that one as well. Um, Interestingly, The Happiness Project was one of the first self-development books that I read. I think I was 26 or 27 um, and I devoured that book on my Kindle 
and that's because I went to the Body Works Museum in Amsterdam and they had some of the quotes from that book on the wall and they really, really resonated with me. Um, for example, one of the quotes was something to do with, basically in summary, it said that money is responsible for X percentage of your happiness, your family for another X percentage and your circumstances for another X percentage, which leaves this chunk and that is up to you. And I think at that point, I did feel overwhelmed with finances and family situation and uni and work and everything else. And I read that book and that started me off on this journey of development. Another book I've read is Light is a New Black. I'm pretty sure I've also reviewed that on here. And it is a great book for you to dip into. Um, so for example, just opened it up and it says, your soul has all the answers, the only way to hear them is to go within. It is a great book about embracing who you are, listening to yourself, striking out on your own path and following your own passions. And sometimes you need to hear that when you have so many people around you telling you what they think is right and that your hobbies and your passions and your interests are boring just to be unapologetically you. Um, and then I've got a couple of books here. This one's called Happy and this one's called Happiness. Um, I brought this one absolutely ages ago and it's by Darren Brown but because it's chunky I just haven't picked it up. Got nothing against big books, I just, I've just bypassed it. And then this one I picked up the other day from a charity shop. Um, and it was two for a pound and I needed an extra book, so I picked that one up. So they're my self-development books. This is probably my most read area of books. Um, business books being my most read, unless you count knitting and crochet, garment construction books then that is the top. Moving to this colourful shelf, I wanted to pick these books out. They are the Terrell series by Amanda Hocking. I first read book one on my Kindle. Um, I think the first book was free and I read it and I was completely engrossed and I downloaded them all and I believe I was on holiday I was in Greece and I read the first one and it was on my Kindle and the beauty of the Kindle is no matter where you are you can get the next book and so I remember vividly that I was sunbathing by the pool and I went into the hotel reception so I could get Wi-Fi and I got and I downloaded book two and so I always had them on my Kindle and then I went to a bookshop and found them in there second hand. Um, and so these are on my to reread page. And I read these a good six years ago. And so my memory of them is a little bit hazy and I am really looking forward to getting back in them. But I definitely recommend them. And they're also really beautiful. So that's a Terrell series by Amanda Hocking. Also, I'm also going to pick out this really beautiful copy of The Wind in the Willows. This was a book given to me for my birthday by my friend as part of my 30 books for my 30th. And it's just a beautiful book and it has illustrations and it is really nicely bound. Um, this isn't one that I'm going to put in my bag and carry around with me. This is one that I'm only going to read at home. Um, and so I think it will be either a long weekend or nighttime reading that I pick this up. But I have read the first chapter. When I, when I was first gifted it, I read the first chapter and it is such a cute story. Oh, 
onto my vampire shelf. Let me show you my pen and my bookmark. This bookmark is, I think it's parchment craft, and my grandmother made it for me. And it's got this really cute flower design on there. And it's laminated as well, which means it's not gonna get mashed up. It used to have a tassel, but that's since come off. And then this is my Harry Potter pen that I got for my birthday, <laughs> which is really cool. It's in the shape of a wand. And that lives in its presentation box on my shelf. So back to the books. Vampires was one of my biggest loves for the longest time and I will always have a soft spot for them in my heart. Um, I read the Twilight series before it became a thing. Um, I discovered them when I was in uni, I think it was my first year, and I discovered Twilight. I bought the books from Asda, a local supermarket, and it was reading week, which means I was supposed to be reading my textbooks. Um, and I remember my boyfriend at the time had gone away and I basically spent about three days cooped up in my room and read through all three of the first books and then the fourth book was released at a later date. And I was, from then on, I was all about the vampire life. Um, and I previously had every single cover that had come out. So the originals, then the white version with the red pages and then also the ones with the movie covers. I collected them all, but I've since chose to cut down and so I will show you some of them in my donation pile. But one of the other series I really enjoyed was Vampire Academy. So this is set in America. Um, it follows Rose and her best friend Lissa. Lissa is a vampire and she's also a princess and she's the last of her bloodline. And then Rose is her soon to be bodyguard and she's a vampire, which means she's half human and half vampire and she's a kick-ass bodyguard. And it's about their life in their boarding school and it um, deals with the politics within the vampire world um, and then also all of the hassles of growing up and all of the usual troubles, boy troubles and whatnot that come with it. Love, love, love this series. So much so that I'm actually rereading these at the moment. I've just finished book four which is this chunky one here and I'm ready to read book five. But just a little fun fact for you, I never read a series back to back. I think the only time I've done that is Twilight and I only read the first three back to back because for me, I enjoy picking and choosing all different areas. There's so many things I want to learn about that I can't just commit to one series. Um, and so I will read a business development book, I will read a self-development book, a biblical, a teen novel and then I will go back to this um, so I would definitely recommend this series without a doubt. Another genre that I've gotten into, um, I wouldn't say recently but it is quite new for me, is biographies and autobiographies and specifically business owners, CEOs, entrepreneurs, I can't say that word, why can't I say that word? Entrepreneurs, there we go. Business owners and CEOs and the likes. Um, and I've read this book, Henry Ford, and he is the designer of the Ford motor car. Now I'm going to caveat it now and say that there are a few statements in there that are not PC and that I definitely don't endorse. However, there are a lot of bits in this book that I have highlighted and that is because he was in a way a pioneer of his time. Um, one thing that I'm really really fascinated by and want to learn more about is the inequality of income and how businesses can address that and how they can help improve, build up their community by paying fairer wages, higher wages, and, and providing 
perks or even just benefits as healthcare and things like that. So for example, there's a company called Cadbury and originally when that was set up, it was like its own little mini village, its own little mini world even, and it, the company provided housing, it provided really good wages, healthcare, and even I think schooling as well, um, to its workers. And because of that, the workers obviously had a much better standard of life and also put a lot more into their work. And how many people do you hear complaining about Oh, I have to go to work because it pays the bills but they don't really want to be there and it only just pays the bills. So that's an area that I'm really into. And Henry Ford was another one of those people where he paid his workers a whole lot more than was expected and he also helped with their social situations. And he also really liked his systems and his workflows and his processes and I'm all about that. If I can find a way to make a job quicker or more efficient, then I will do that. And it's really, really interesting to see how he turned this huge manufacturing business and streamlined it and made it so efficient and economical. And so I have actually highlighted so many areas in this. It's a little bit heavy going because it was slightly older English, but I did enjoy it. Um, and I'm also reading at the moment Alan Sugar's biography. And that is very similar in that he had this huge business and he was very, very involved in it and had a lot of systems. And I want to read more and more books along those lines. From the white shelf, I'm going to show you a couple of the biblical texts that I've been reading. This one is called God a Mocker and Me and it's by my pastor. And this one is designed so that you can read small areas whilst you have your morning coffee. It's got loads in there. And the other book that I really, really like by him is called Giants Will Fall. Um, I actually have purchased four copies of that and they have all been lent out to family members so we don't have that here to share with you. That's another one that I have read a couple of times and would like to read again. And then that just leaves my Harry Potter shelf. So my very first shelf has got my Harry Potter books on there and there's also a few down here and that's because I have my copies and then I also have my granddad's copies from when he passed away. Um, I have reread book seven recently and I want to reread book six um, but I gotta wait a little bit because I only just read book seven. I also just read Fantastic Beasts, no I didn't. I also just read Beedle of the Bard and I'd like to read Fantastic Beasts. Um, and then I've also read her other books, so J.K. Rowling wrote under the name of Robert Galbraith because it was supposed to be her secret name, only it got leaked. And I've read, I think, the first two out of four and they were actually pretty good going. They are more along the crime genre, but they were good and I would definitely recommend them. So I'm really, really quickly going to show you some other books that I was going to donate, that I am donating. They're just, I'm really, really quickly going to pan over some of the books that I am donating. Um, there's almost a hundred of them in the stack. And then that will be the end of this book tour, my shelfie. I hope you've really, really enjoyed it. And that it's been a nice little insight to see some of the books on my bookshelves. It was a really quick pit stop and I could spend a whole lot more time talking about these books and the shelves and what I've read and what I want to read. But I will be including more book reviews in my HDDC hot right now. You can go and watch um, the February's because I did cover, I think it was two or three books in that one. And there will be another one at the end of March for you as well. So 
I'm gonna pan over my donated books and then that's everything from me and I will see you next time. Take care tribe. These are some of the books I'm donating because they're either duplicates or I've read them or I don't want to read them. I'm going to donate these books to some of the hospital wards that my brother was on earlier last year and hopefully the patients will enjoy them and it will be a nice distraction for them.